In this edition of Art Rocks, a jazz musician sees music as a part of our everyday life. Well, music in the context of being in New Orleans was actually just part of life. An artist whose every tile mirrors a piece of nature. That's where I go to photograph and capture something that doesn't have the traces of man. Ballerinas capture an era of tragedy. My point of view is that light should be used as a way to talk about contemporary issues. And a clock artist who's turning trash into treasures. I like finding some little gadget that doesn't work anymore and then finding out what's inside. Sometimes there's nothing in there. It's all ahead on this edition of Art Rock. Additional funding is provided by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Hello, I'm James Fox Smith, publisher of Country Roads Magazine. Thanks for joining us for LPB's new art program, Art Rocks. Each week we'll feature an artist, musician or writer from Louisiana, along with a look at what's happening in communities throughout the US, and we think you'll be inspired by the folks you'll meet. So let's get started. Creole jazz musician and composer Don Vappi gathered with a group of friends in our studio to play his own blend of original music and the experience was simply mesmerizing. We hope you'll enjoy the performance as we join Don and special guests Mike Esnault on keyboard, David Hinson on bass and John Jones on drums for a taste of spicy Creole jazz. Playing music for me was actually my earliest conscious memory, knowing I wanted to be a musician in like first grade, second grade or something. I just always knew I wanted a family and I wanted to be a musician. Many of my influences were actually local people in New Orleans. I was into soul music and it became Motown, but uh, later on I got into jazz, I got bored with disco. Well, music in the context of being in New Orleans was actually just part of life. I think that's the African element of, that stayed in the Creole culture, is that you don't separate everything. Music is just one part of it.
music touches people, makes them happy, makes them, makes them feel something. It's special to be able to touch people in a good way. That song, Verona, that's for my wife. That's her name. And I always wanted to write something pretty. I think it's pretty. Love, a gift from me to you. Love, our heart's command is true. Though we are apart, I feel the warmth of your touch. I am home. I've been fortunate to play with a lot of famous people. I've done a lot of different things. I just feel this desire to continue to grow. I just had this love for music. I think it's just love. Don Vappi has produced and recorded numerous CDs and film soundtracks and is the star of the PBS documentary American Creole, New Orleans Reunion. He currently teaches in the Jazz Studies program at Loyola University School of Music in New Orleans. And now, here's a look at some of the upcoming arts events happening across Louisiana. For more information on these events, visit our website at lpb.org slash art rocks. And you can find more arts events like these at countryroadsmag.com. In Texas, artist Dixie Friend Gay is making the airport a karma place one mosaic at a time. Here's a look. When I was in graduate school, I was studying roots of religion. And I traveled a lot in Europe, and I was just blown away by the mosaics. They could be 2,000 years old and still be as vibrant. And it, when I turned 40, I said, okay, this is what I'm doing. I want to make big, big work, really large work, and I want to work with the mosaic. I'm interested in preserving that parts of nature that are still left. You know, those little pieces of land that we have that's original. That's where I go to photograph and document and try to capture something that doesn't have the traces of man. When I was working on the uh, Houston Bayou, I was in the, down in the bayous in the kayaking. Started doing sketches, did preliminary thumbnail work, did small little paintings. And then I did the large painting, which is, I think, about eight, 20 feet long. And I used the fabricators in Cuernavaca, Mexico. I took my painting down there, and we actually drew it off on large uh, sheets of paper and then cut the paper up 
and then they look at my painting and interpret it in glass. This dragonfly has 24 karat gold in it, so I've got a lot of iridescent qualities that the dragonfly has, and it was a lot of fun to uh, work on getting the fabrication just right on that. Why mosaics work so well in a public space? Because from a distance, they can appear to be a painting or an image that you can see, and as you walk up to it, it becomes almost like confetti, and it breaks up and becomes very abstract. When I did the Port of Miami, it's called Ephemeral Everglades, and I spent weeks hiking and kayaking and boating all through the Everglades to try to capture that vastness of nature. I spent a month at the prairie at a certain time of the year for Indianapolis and really being intimate with it to understand the shape of the plants and the birds at that particular time of year. The Dallas airport I just finished in March. It is 18 feet high and 64 feet wide and it's of the prairie in the springtime, so it has all the native flowers in bloom. And it has a, a lot of handmade ceramic in it. And it also has something new that I hadn't done before is we have bulged out some of the flowers so they're three-dimensional. All my newest work has handmade clay tiles in it. The first piece that I did with my own ceramic pieces was called Strata and it's in the woodlands. The next piece I did was for Texas A&M and it, we did the benthic zone all here in my studio. What my process on these smaller pieces were, it's kind of going back to the surrealist where they would do a print and then they would find the message in the print. And I knew I wanted to work on the cellular level, the atomic level. So I played around with uh, that organic shape and those colors. And working on these small pieces really changed the color of my palette. It became much brighter. The hours of solitude and placing the the tile and stuff was so zen, which is addictive. It's it's wonderful place to go. In addition to the Houston and Dallas airports, gaze mosaics can be seen around Texas and across the country. To learn more, visit DixieFriendGay.com. The Colorado Ballet is endeavoring to artistically represent one of the darkest periods in human history. Their production of light, the Holocaust and Humanity Project combines contemporary ballet with Holocaust education, promoting the protection of human rights through arts and public dialogue. Slowly. My point of view is that light should be used um, as a way to talk about contemporary issues, using the Holocaust as a jumping off point. Well, like the Holocaust and Humanity Project came out of a long discussion that I was <clears throat> having with myself um, after the events of 9-11 as an artist. Okay. And that sent me on a search. Um, and it led me uh, to a, a survivor of the Holocaust named Naomi Warren. And from my discussions with Naomi came this uh, project. I took it up 
upon myself to illustrate the fact that the issues of the Holocaust are present with us today. Issues of human rights, bigotry, hate. You're standing in Auschwitz, you can, you can sense the resonance of what, what took place, the hundreds of thousands of people that were murdered on this site. You know, and I just said to myself, I didn't come here to cry. I came here to learn, and I came here to do something. Go. This project has impacted me uh, very much. To just let go and be in the moment is really special. It's a performance where we as dancers don't have to think about dance steps. We don't have to think about technique or turning out or pointing, which we always have to think about when we're performing. We can let that go and just concentrate on the story and how to tell this journey of these people that had to suffer through so much. This pop-up, uh, the guy needs to give you enough energy that you just bat, right? There's a metaphoric period of these loud sirens that, for me, indicates this disruption of being put on these cars and transported for days to places unknown. This claustrophobic sort of feeling that takes place. The siren pushing them, pushing them, and the audience as well. people stepping onto that circle, and then people stepping off the circle of life until there's one survivor left, and that's Naomi. Working on a project like this is, is very profound. Um, it's life-changing, and has been life-changing for me. It's really taught me a lot about, about people, about um, human connections, about being strong. I think the most important thing about viewing a work like this um, is to think about how it's relevant in your own life. I've been touched by how people can come out of it and still be hopeful and still have love and, you know, still want to live. I mean, it's these stories that I've read are just heartbreaking. And what's so inspiring is that they've, they've taken these horrible experiences and just turn, turned around and, and lived these, these long, beautiful lives. You were in the presence of someone sharing that sort of personal information with you. It's, it's the most amazing gift um, that could ever be given to you. Sometimes when you learn something metaphorically, it reaches you more deeply than, than knowing it intellectually because you know it spiritually. certainly is a way to soothe uh, a battered spirit, but I think also art has the potential to teach. To learn more, visit coloradoballet.org. Each week on Art Rocks, we'll celebrate and learn about one of Louisiana's treasures, artistic elements that have a unique connection to Louisiana. This week, we'll examine Newcomb Pottery. Born as a part of the arts and crafts movement, Newcomb Pottery has remained one of the best-known southern examples of the craft. Sophie Newcomb College was a woman's liberal arts facility connected to Tulane University in New Orleans. The training in fine craftsmanship gave women with artistic talents expanded opportunities. The look of Newcomb Pottery is characterized by botanical motifs, examples of the flora and fauna found in South Louisiana. 
each one-of-a-kind item had to pass a four-person faculty jury before being sold. These were well-designed items for the home that were affordable. The Newcomb Pottery was closed after 45 years in the advent of World War II, but these pieces remain highly valued and sought after among collectors. Newcomb Pottery, made in Louisiana. Artist Richard Burtek of Otego, New York, has been making fantasy clocks for almost 30 years. Having showcased his work in over 80 galleries around the world, Burkett says he spends most of his time turning trash into treasure. See for yourself. Hi, I'm Richard Burkett, fantasy clocks. I'm the master of the universe and ruler of this time-space continuum. I basically started Toil well, it's been just a hair over 29 years ago, and I had been working as a furniture mover and also as a, I was a painter sculptor down in New York City. And I saw on one of the moving jobs this clock, and I go over to pick it up, and it was a tall thing, and I pick it up, it's just when I looked wood, and I asked the woman, she says, oh, I went to a thing where I paid the guy $100, so there was a bunch of us. He gave us all the materials and the movements, and we made these clocks. And this was a few years before I started, but I sort of filed that away as anybody can make a clock. When my wife and I decided to have kids, I decided I should have to, we should move out of the city, so I... Uh, started making clocks and they were much different looking than they are now but at the same time they were considered extremely strange looking for the time. Most people didn't even know they were clocks. They looked, looked more like oh, three-dimensional paintings or um, Mondrian done off the wall. First ten years of doing them it was mostly galleries and museums and stuff like that that were buying them and I would do uh, some little shows in the well they weren't that little in Manhattan and uh, it took off right away some of the people you know uh, they bring me things like this woman who has one of my clocks from 1985 and she's got a couple other clocks and she brought me a whole shopping bag full of 19 blackberries and boy am I having fun with those. It's you know one of those things where I, I, I enjoy taking things apart. I like finding some little gadget that doesn't work anymore and then finding out what's inside. Sometimes there's nothing in there. I always have liked the looks of clocks, and the idea of time is fascinating. I just don't know as, uh, I don't always put the two together. Uh, it's kind of like uh, time is an interesting concept, but uh, there's probably something out there better to replace it. I just haven't found it yet. Basically, uh, the reason I make clocks is I really have very little interest in time. Actually, my company motto is time is irrelevant, it's clocks that are important. Uh, uh, and, you know, it's basically, they just seem, you know, it's the practicality of them. have one of my clocks when the mothership comes back. It is the ticket. So, you know, clocks, clocks are good. Fantasy clocks are even better. So, we'll see you in the future. To learn more, visit fantasyclock.com. And that wraps it up for this edition of Art Rocks. To learn more about the show, visit our website at lpb.org slash artrocks where you'll find feature videos and information on upcoming art events. Today, we'll finish out the show with more jazz from Don Vappi and Friends. 
And until next time, I'm James Fox Smith, and thanks for watching.